Okay, this is Mike with RKU Distributing. It's Mike Peterson. He's the owner of Last Chance Performance Marine. We're down in Hemet. Today is uh, January 28, 2022. We're going to go over this uh, California Department of Fish and Wildlife uh, Fisheries Division out of Chico. They bought this um, low roughneck 1860. We're going to go over an orientation on this today. This is a brand new boat. Go ahead. Okay, so to start with, we'll start here at the top of the trailer. Um, you do have your safety cables on each side. It does have the four flat. If you choose to swing the tongue for storage purposes, you're gonna pull this pin, this pin, and then this swings around. All It'll swing all the way around. When you bring it back, you just wanna be careful not to swing it too hard to pinch your brake lines. I mean, your uh, electrical to your lights. There's that. It does have the standard winch. A little bit of pressure downward will release it. You also have a safety cable while you're towing. To bring it back taut, you just simply pull this up and you bring it back down tight to the... And you do have, right here you have LED clearance lights. All the lights on the trailer are LED. Therefore, you don't have to worry about disconnecting the power when you go launch the boat because the LED lights are cool, therefore they don't blow out. So you can leave it plugged in with the trailer all the time for your tow vehicle. <clears throat> Again, you have the LED clearance light on the side. You have your galvanized trailer with the galvanized load guides. The custom aluminum wheels go with this trailer package. The lug nuts have been tightened to 115 torque pounds. Um, you want to check those every 500 to 1,000 miles to make sure that they seat well. To get to the bearings to grease them, which you should do probably like every six months with a couple dabs of grease, you have to take the wheel completely off to get behind this cap to hit the Zerk fitting. Gas tank located here. You have five gallons in it right now to test fire the motor. It holds a total of 19 total. You have your four point cleats. There's one on each corner of the boat. Fossum pods, a really nice feature with this jet motor that'll keep the boat, back of the boat pushed upward. You can get in some really shallow water with this. Then on the ratchet tie downs that you requested, you can see on this side, there's a little yellow keeper right there. I put that on all these boats that have sponson pods. And the reason for that is if you don't have that yellow piece of rubber right there hitting this edge of the sponson pod, what's gonna happen is driving down the road, the vibration will cut the straps. So that's why I threw the, I just threw those in for you. This is your intake for your live well. If you choose to use that, if this gets clogged with brackish water, moss, whatever, it simply unscrews, clean it out and screw it back on. Drain plug located here. Jet motor. This comes with, I supplied you with a grease gun. It's, the manual says every 30 hours. I recommend every 20 running hours that you add some grease to this lower unit or she'll blow it up. How much grease? Just a couple squirts is all you need. Okay. There's a little tag right here. Got it. And this is the number two lubricant I gave you. Okay. Navigation light. For before, the we, before we move forward, okay. um, towing down the road, how should that be positioned? Um, you want it in the upward position. This being a jet without the rest of the prop and a 27 inch transom, you can actually lower the motor. You're not going to hit anything. Okay. If you want, you can add a motor support for it if they choose to do so. Okay. I think you could, there's two different types. You get, there's one that goes here to here, and there's another one that goes right here. This is the easier one of the two to use. If you want, I can we have those in stock. Okay. So, navigation light located, uh, position for the rear is here. The navigation light for the rear is located on that firewall over there. This is your drain for your live well. It comes with a plug to put a plug inside. Um, when I get up inside, I'll show you how that works. Front navigation area is located here. This is going to be located in this storage compartment. On this side right here. It's on okay. the inside right here. You might want to go to the other side oh, so you can gotcha. see it. So this is your front navigation light. Okay. And that's just basic storage, same as this. So let me get up inside and give you a little walk around on that. Okay. 
I'll start up here on the front of the boat since I started there already. So you do, if you choose to put a trolling motor on it, it will sit right here. This is your power source for the trolling motor. It's already plumbed for a 24 volt trolling motor. But you're in your owner's packet. The plug that goes in here is supplied. So that way if you buy a trolling motor, you just cut the end off of it and you put that on and you're good to go. And it comes with the connectors as well. And again, just like I said, basic storage. And then your light well is here. There's two plugs that come with the boat um, for the live well. So you would plug this and you regulate the flow of water with this or you could shut it down. If you want to use it for a cooler or something, you could shut the live well down. And once the live well gets to a certain elevation, it goes through this hole right here and out the side of the boat behind me here. Okay. Again, navigation light located there. You have some rod holders or you can put a push pole right here if you want, if you're going to use it in that way. And then you have storage here. Backrest. And there's, there's, on this side here, you have a grab handle for okay. if someone's going to be sitting here. That's that, where that goes. This grab handle is put in with stainless steel screws. It's extremely strong. So if somebody's standing here and you're going through shallow water or something, they can get a real good hold on this and they don't have to worry about it breaking or anything. You have your navigation lights here. So obviously when you're underway, it's abbreviation for nav navigation is on top. So that goes down. So front and back light goes on. If you're anchored, then you go to the back position. And for off, you just go to the center position. The bill is located here. Aerator for the light well here. You have a fuel gauge and then the hour gauge that you requested is mounted right here. You have a basic part of a form of trim, which is here, and you also have one on the motor as well. Here's your start. Your starting position is here, obviously. It does come with a second set of keys that will be in your owner packet. Kill switch located here. It has a little clip here, D ring on your life jacket here. If you choose to put a trolling motor in here, this is where the two batteries are going to be located down here. Everything's already all plumbed going forward, so all you gotta do is simply just put the battery in, strap it, and connect them, and you have connect and hook up to a trolling motor. If you wanna use this boat and you're driving, you can have this so you're comfortable standing. If you wanna sit and be comfortable, you have this foot rest here as well. And it's set up to where two, two across here and one right here is very comfortable seating in this boat. Now the hour meter, <clears throat> The way it's hooked up, it's not directly to the motor, it's to the power source, which is here. So when you turn the key on, it just starts ticking. So if somebody leaves the key on and they forget and they go and they store it, it's just gonna keep clicking off time. So you gotta make sure that the key is always in the off position when you're not using the big motor and give you accurate hours. Right, so to recap, because that was a little bit noisy, that, that hour meter is tied to that key switch. So if that key switch is left on, it's gonna click those hours. So you wanna make sure that um, that when that key is in the engage, you're running. Otherwise, you're piling up hours without the engine running. Correct. Okay. And then the hour meter you're going to use that. I'll go through that with the break-in procedure. You'll use it for the break-in procedure of the motor. And then also there's a um, time frame that you're going to use to grease the lower unit of the jet. So okay. this is a pretty important piece of equipment that we added to the boat. You choose to put a seat in this boat. You already have the built-in pedestal, base, back here you're going to find your interstate battery is located here. This pump here is your intake for your live well and then this is your bilge pump here. Got it. Everything is real accessible, real easy to get to. And there's a lot of storage back here for life jackets, etc. Tow ropes. Mm -hmm. interior of the boat. You want to kill that so I get outside yeah. and I'll get you. Ready. Okay, so this is going to be going with you, Mike, today. This is your owner packet for the boat. A um, few things. If you decide to add a trolling motor and you put the two batteries underneath the helm like we talked about, this is your positive connector uh, protection. So if anything metallic crosses to your negative side, you're not causing a problem there. 
And then this would be your jumper if you decide to go with the 24 volt system. This is your jumper for your batteries. This is your spare set of keys. This stuff you don't need that so much. Here's your drain plug for the live well and it comes with a spare. And then this is the plug I was talking about that comes with the trolling motor harness that's installed in this boat. So you already have a plug, you just need the trolling motor and you're good to go. Then on the warranty information's here, any questions you have about the warranty, you can call Mercury or you can call us even, I don't care, it's, it's fine, we'll answer any questions you have. So this talks about your standard warranty that's three years on the motor. Then you have your, your owner's operation uh, manual. On page 41, my technician has given you the break-in procedure on that so you don't have to look for it. And then he's also highlighted the break-in procedure. Because you do not have a tachometer, you're gonna have to ignore this 4,500 RPM. So for the first two hours of operation, you're gonna run the engine at full, uh, very throttle position settings at three-quarter throttle. So you don't wanna exceed three-quarter throttle. So you're gonna run, I always say do it for two minutes at a time. You get out, you have like eight throttle, then you go to half throttle, then you go to eight th quarter throttle, up to three quarter throttle. You just wanna bury the RPMs. And then every, the reason I say to do that every two minutes is that every 10 minutes, they want you to run the motor full throttle for one minute. Super easy. Basically the motor's broke in after those two hours, but they don't want you to push it for hours three through 10 and that you just can't run it for full, full throttle for more than five minutes at a time. Super easy to read, it's only two paragraphs. Does that make sense? Yep, total Good. sense, Good. absolute perfect. Then on this, the jet lower unit is by a jet company. It's not a Mercury product. Mercury works with them and has designed it to go with the Mercury motor. So this is all, all your information about the jet motor itself, your owner manual. It tells you the RPMs and stuff that you can run this at and different elevations. We have, it shows you right here how to set it to the bottom of the bo uh, boat and it has been elevated to this right here. So we check that. We supplied you with a grease gun and some grease. And what that does is, Mercury Manual says every 30 hours this should be greased with a couple squirts of grease. Um, we always tell everybody just put a couple like every 10 to 15 hours, that way you don't burn the lower unit up. So this is where you're gonna put the Zerk fitting. This has the Zerk fitting already on it. Just simply plug the grease gun into that, pump it, and put this cap back on it. And if you want a motor support, I can get you one of those too. So, okay. And then this is did the we... other point of trim I was talking about here as well. Oh, okay. I gotcha. have another point of trim. Here. Yep. And then, did we go over that cover? Let's go over that cover real quickly. Okay. Um, the cover is a full cover. It protects the interior of uh, the seats and the motor and the actual deck itself. Um, it's it, there's a tag on the very front where you're going to start. So the tag goes to the front of the boat, and then you just simply roll the cover over. The back of the motor and it has tie downs already inside too okay it's not a towing cover though it is not a tow cover right it's a and storage cover it's a storage cover and the warranty for the cover is in the bag got it and it comes with that nice little okay. bag there so yeah all right i think that's, that's it pretty much yours. okay pretty well simple. thank you mike you're welcome thank you thank you go ahead okay so now that you've added the motor wedge i'm going to show you how this works it's really easy to use you simply trim the motor up a little bit this snaps into, it has a little slice in the back. You put that in and you turn it so this this cut is going backwards. And you just simply put a little bit of pressure on it. And as long as, long as it doesn't twist, that means it's tight enough and that's your support, simple as that. Okay, perfect. So it's a lot easier than the other transom type. You could, real easy to manage. You just have to remember to take this off before you launch the boat because obviously you can't trim down and it's gonna right. be a little panic mode for a minute there, trying okay. to get it out. Right. What you do is you take your straps off as part of this little ritual. You take the straps, retract the straps, and then take this off and you're good to go. Yeah.